We are going to discuss about the industry perspective on developing safe use for drone. Um, and here is the topic and the agenda that we are going to talk about. Um, the first, starting from the first, is actually why safe use is actually needed, the potential risk scenario, the specification for safe application, and also the Crop Life Asia operator training guidelines. So um, we are going, this is the reason why the safe use basically is needed for the drone applications for the crop protection. As we all know that the drones are not only a new type of technology, it plays a role to enable the digital farming offerings to the smallholders. And if I could take a little bit quote coming from Uncle Ben in Spider-Man movie, with a great power comes a very great responsibility. So almost the same like this innovation and this technology. This drone, or we can say the great innovation also need to come with the responsibility for its responsible use. It needs to ensure of, of appropriate stewardship measures are put in place to maximize the benefit while uh, minimizing the risk. And of course, by making it you know, to be accepted and develop the regulation for the drone application, we also need to think how we really can protect everyone who link with this orga, uh, with this drone application, like the operators, the farmers, and even to consider what will be the impact of environment and et cetera. So to steer the responsibility or uh, to steer the responsible use of the drone usage in agriculture, all stakeholders basically need to work together they are really need to work closely. Either it is the industry, the drone manufacturer, the government, and so on, to define the SOP and how to implement it, and also how to reinforce it to ensure really the highest safety standard for the growers, um, consumers, and also for the environment. So before we go deeper, with the safe application and so on. Um, this is this slide is actually just would like to show you about some of the potential risk scenario while apply um, the crop protection through drones. The risk itself can be from everywhere. It, it and the risk itself can impact to um, anyone. Risk to the bystanders, risk to the operations team itself, risk to the environment, and also risk to the crops itself. And it can be very happening because of the error coming from 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 anything. It can be a human error, device error, and also the external factors. So. For examples, um, we can see from this slide that, uh, you know, risk to the operations team here. Um, what will be very happen, let's say, if the operators or even the applicators forget to clean the equipment. So the contamination might be very happening and it will damage the crop. So the risk to crop is actually happening because of somebody is actually forget um, to clean or to to wash the contaminated equipment so that it impacts all of those things to the crop itself. So that is why we need, by, by, by capturing this scenario, the risk mitigation is actually really needed. We have already got the scenarios and um, you know, the, that's why from the scenario that we have already developed, the SOP, the SOP or even the safety guidelines is really needed to be followed and also um, because of um, it will minimize the incident that will be very happen because of it. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the good drone application practices are really important. 
um, two minutes and significantly uh, reduce the potential risk on health of the operators and environment that he operates in. Um, so the next slide, um, we'll be talking about more to basic of like do's and don'ts of operating the drone. We further recommend the national authorities uh, to consult and work together with the drone manufacturers and also the local stakeholders to fine tune the SOP for the local um, condition. So this is the safe application before spraying. Um, here in the before spraying and also whenever we handle and apply the pesticide, um, please always read and understand the label before use and also follow the instruction. We need to carefully go through the manufacturer's pre-flight checklist, if any, and check every part for signs of damage or even the, um, the obstruction. Do not forget to check the flying conditions and itinerary like weather and also temperature and also humidity and understand the area that we are going to treat as well as the surrounding area, including like beehive. So it means that we need to give a poor, a purely attention to the to this um, farmers, bee farmers. It is also super important to check the nozzles, the pressure settings, and also the appropriate uh, for delivering the right size droplets for the job. And also do not forget to use the PPE during uh, the mixings and loadings. And during the application, we need to pay uh, attention to the environmental variables that will impact to the drone operation. So later on, I know that the um, application technology team will explain in detail about how the wind speed can influence the flying height and so. So, but basically in, in, in this during application part, um, we need to also keep in mind that we need to protect the peoples and also the environment. Ensuring the peoples or even the animals do not enter the application area. But if they do, stop, uh, uh, do stop spraying and do not restart it until they have left. Later, I know we will talk about the PPE, but during the application safety, helmet is really mandatory to be used. And in the after the application, uh, we need to consider, uh, you know, the exit and also the re-entry. The re-entry should be aligned uh, with the product label and also with the local uh, country regulation and ensure to put the clear signs of warning for the field entering before appropriate re-entry time. The drone needs to be sprayed with water to decontaminate it. And the tank should be triple rinsed with the clean water and then be partially filled and sprayed out to clean out the pipes and also the other equipment uh, left to dry. Inspection of damage of the rotors, integrity of pipes and etc. might need to be recorded. And we need to also keep in mind that we need to charge the battery, ensuring the drone is fully ready for the next treatment. Be aware on the situations that might result in exposure to pesticide on the job. Use the PPE also um, use the PPE also during the spill cleanup, repairing, and also maintaining equipment, and when transporting, storing, or even disposing of pesticide container, container to prevent the exposure of the of pesticide to the applicator. So this is the requirement, uh, the required PPE for the drone application. In order to conduct the drone uh, to spray pesticides for crops, PPE must be properly used to ensure the high safety margins to avoid the potential risk of pesticide. Um, I mean, the pesticide exposure, both direct or even the indirect, indirect uh, exposure. It can be during the mixing, loading, spraying, cleaning, sample collection, and also the re-entry. So you can see here that the required PPE includes coveralls um, and then chemical resistant uh, nitrile glove, which is really, really a must and mandatory to be used during the mixing and loading or even the container rinsing. And then the next one is chemical resistant footwear and also socks. Protective goggles, um, 
and face shield, an appropriate respirator, especially when doing the ULV, um, ultra low volume or up upward spraying, the waterproof headgear. And here, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned before, that the helmet must be mandatory for the drone up operator, navigator, and assistance during the operation. And don't forget to provide the first aid kit. I know uh, because of if the incident is actually happen, you need the emergency action as soon as possible. Make sure that the first aid kit is actually really can help. And I would like you to pay attention as well with the warning sign um, here for do not eat, do not drink, and do not smoking while spraying. And alcohol must not be consumed within eight hours before the operations of the, uh, of the drone. And do not use the mobile phone when um, during, during the spraying application. And this is the basic um, do's and don'ts only to reduce the minimize and environmental impact. So you can see here that uh, spray drift loss can be limited by using low drift spray technology, um, like you know low drift nozzles and so on. And avoid spraying plant protection products during the peak period of honeybee activity or honey collection. So making sure that the bee farmers is actually aware when we are doing the, the, the spraying application or even you would like to conduct the field trial using the drone, make sure that the bee farmers is actually keep it in contact so that if this kind of point number second, which is um, peak period of honeybee activity can be reduced or even can be minimized or even we can avoid that. And following level warning and recommendation for avoiding harm fears, bird, bird, silkworm, and other non-target organism. Do not spray pesticide near water sources. Do not pollute the environment by misusing pesticide. And ensure that the proper disposal must be well away from water or other sensitive area. Never burn or bury hazardous waste container disposed of waste, waste disposal, uh, disposable in a legal way. But these kind of things is actually, we need to check back with the country, uh, local country requirement um, about the container management system, especially for the pesticide. Do not apply um, the, the uh, do not apply and, you know, doing the application when temperature is high and the uh, humidity is low. And do not apply when there is um, an air infection. And the last but not least, um, the general aspect of stewardship guidelines, which is we all have already noticed about it, to handle the crop protection product, like you know, getting the consultation and getting the advice before buying and using the product um, from the authorized retailers or other export who really understand about the product for safety and also the proper use. Um, when transporting pesticide, make sure that it is securely stored away uh, from people, animals, and food. And when storing the pesticide, make sure that the place is actually uh, well ventilated and also secure in the, in the, in the low place. Uh, carefully read and the product label and, and uh, follow the instruction which providing clear safety guidance. Check the multi rotors for leaks and the nozzles work properly. Personal protective equipment is actually really needed to be used uh, when doing this. Uh, do the triple rinse and empty pesticide containers, which is a mandatory and also become the standard. Um, spray at the downwind end of the field to avoid having to walk uh, through crop which has been contaminated by drifting spray. And after spraying pesticide, directly take a shower, put on a clean clothes, wash the spray equipment and also personal protective equipment, and then store all equipment separately and safely. So now, as a relatively new technology, um, UAV or even the drone uh, spray operators are typically engaged in a multiple services apart from its operation for pesticide. So that's why 
uh, the, the drone spray operators will need to acquire and combine the additional knowledge of either drones or pesticide on top of their existing expertise. So here, CropLife Asia is actually committed to promote effective stewardship to ensure the crop protection products are used in a responsible manner and continue to work to uphold um, this practice with the new agricultural technology and therefore CropLife Asia basically has already developed the guidance documents that aim to, uh, to provide the recommendations on the knowledge and skills required of the UAV or the drone operators. So um, in this guidance document, there will be several key training topics for the operators that capture like general aspect of the um, UAS, the laws and the regulations, the technical knowledge on how to operate and the SOP of the pesticide safe use and the general knowledge of pesticides. So in summary, um, as I mentioned in, in, in our, my previous slide that the innovation always come with the responsibility uh, for its responsible use, safe use and its reinforcement to ensure the highest safety standard for the grower, consumer, and also the environment. Um, today in CropLife Asia, we have already established two guidelines in place. One is the SOP for drone, and the second is for the operator training and certification gu uh, guidance. These guidelines is to support interested countries in framing policies for the safe use of drone. So I believe I captured everything for the safe use and the perspective from the uh, coming from the industry. Thank you so much for uh, the attention. <laughs>